Okay. Hey, YouTube. Well, um, so in the process, I'm uploading a big file to share with one of my family members. Um, and this record, um, it's a zip file that I'm uploading to Google Drive, um, dedicated to the Italian Zampogna bagpipes. And I figured I really should make a YouTube video talking about how and when and why I really fell in love with the Zampogna. Because the thing is, very few people play these instruments. And it's also an instrument that's on the verge of extinction. Just as a vibrato, a good vibrato in opera is almost dying out. Even though nobody notice, notices, notices this. It's really almost dying out because we have very few people who can sing with a good trill and very few people who can sing with a lot of expression in their operatic singing. There are quite a few people that can do it, such as Denise Lee, like I introduced earlier, and Laura Breton. Even one of my new subscribers, Marissa, she's got a good, um, had a good vibrato. Last I remember listening to her in 2010 when, when she uploaded that video and it was in 2010, she was 12 years old. A really stunning version of Oh Mio Babino Caro. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about why and how I fell in love with the Italian Zampogna. So just a brief story of kind of like a chronological memory here. So Christmas Day 2009, or 2008, excuse me, seventh grade. I've been wanting the Bagpipes of the World album by Sean Folsom ever since sixth grade, I believe. And I didn't get it until... Um, Christmas of 2008 when I was in 7th grade and I love that CD anybody who doesn't who is not really familiar with all the different kinds of bagpipes from around the world you really should get that CD it is available on iTunes and Spotify it's called Bagpipes of the World not around the world but of the world and one of my favorite groups of tracks were ones covering the Italian Zampogna now the thing I like about the Zampogna is it's a pretty simple reason here. So, whereas most bagpipes have two chanters, which is, you know, if you, f if you know what a bagpipe is, you know that the chanter is the part of the bagpipe that makes the melody. And then the drones just, you know, are other pipes that just, like, make that low-pitched note. On the Zamponia, there are two chanters, sometimes even three. Um, as I delved deeper into the instrument's um, during my freshman year of high school. We'll get to that later. But two different chanters, and I really like, you know, the reason why I started playing bagpipes, obviously, is because I really like the sound of more than one note, vo more than one voice part, if you will, at the same time. Whereas a piano and violin, you know, you can have more than one, but that's up to more than one. Bagpipes, you have to have at least more than one sound at the same time. Which is which partly explains why I love the songs Some Nights by Fun, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen, and quite a few other um quite a few other songs that have really good, you know, harmonies and stuff in it. Um So the thing I love about the Zamponia is because it has two chanters. And so ever since I got that C D I did as much research as I could about the Zamponia, and the first website I found was Hot Pipes where I actually got this where um, I actually found the Bagpipes of the World CD, and I looked at their pages that covered the Zamponia, and I figured, oh my gosh, this is really cool. Like, one page was dedicated to a fellow friend who went to Italy and bought two Zamponias from one of the most famous Zamponia makers, which, again, I'll get to later. And they said that Zamponias are very rare, and everybody who falls seems to fall under the spell of the, of the Zamponia wants, maybe eventually wants one of the big ones. Because this guy bought a base Zamponia. Um, and so, and then they said in that same page, the makers of the Zamponia that he bought, like, the people who made the, the guys who made the Zamponia that this friend bought, can be heard playing a Zamponia and on number 10 of track 10 of the album it's called La Zampogna Lucana and so when they said that I figured okay what does that type of Zampogna sound like because if they said that 
they're one of the best makers of the Zamponi. I really need to get that album. And so, um, as it as it this this was actually I, f- I should mention that this wasn't until eighth May or April of eighth grade that I read this. And so, one of my teachers, um, well, not really a teacher, but like she helped me with Braille, and basically it's called teacher consultant because you know being blind. Um, they had to get everything brailled and, you know, put electronic format because I simply can't read, you know, print pieces of paper. So anyway, my teacher consultant back then who, who knew me really well since third grade, she said, well, if you're graduating from eighth grade from middle school, how about we give you an eighth grade graduation present? And that was that CD. And so ever since I got that CD on June, I believe it was June 16th, 2010. I can't remember the exact date. I just fell in love with this instrument even more. Um, but the problem is, there are very few people who speak English that can play this instrument. They're pretty much all limited to people who can only speak Italian, which I think absolutely sucks because, for one, I don't speak Italian at all, and two, I want to get more and more people to play these instruments because, like I said, it's on the verge of extinction. Just like vibrato in opera, you know, we have very few good opera singers these days. All these people who think they can sing opera really well, well, they've got a wobble vibrato, which is a really slow vibrato. They think it's a good vibrato? Uh Uh-uh, it's a wobble vibrato. Probably because they don't have as good keen ears as I I do as a blind person. In fact, I'm I'm about to, within the next couple of months, I'm going to do a video series about vocal reviews of, like, um, like appraisals of singing voices that I particularly like and why I like them. And I really want this will also give others a chance to be introduced to some of my other favorite singers that barely has anybody heard of. Like Denise Lee, for example. I'm the only one that I know of that's heard of Denise Lee, besides my sister who I introduced her to. But as far as heard of somebody before I told people about it, I'm the only one that has heard of Denise Lee. And yet she's the best, in my opinion. Anyway, so back to the Zamponia. Sorry about that. So the problem is that very few people in this country play the Zamponia. Um, because, you know, it's pretty much limited to just Italian people. And I really want more and more people to take up these really fabulous instruments. Um, and so, okay, having got that Zamponia album... Um, that too is available on iTunes and Spotify and whatever, but all the tracks are not very good quality because they were just, they call them field recordings. Now, I have done quite a substantial amount of remastering on these, on this CD, um, because, um, the Zamponia basically, it has different parts to the instrument, and quite often the same part within each Zamponia is like louder than everything else, and we'll get to that. We'll get to that at a later date. So the La Zampogna Lucana CD. Now I I should digress here that the Zampogna is spelled Z A M P O G N A because this is an Italian instrument. Um, and one of the tracks number ten on the La Zampogna Lucana CD is called is by Antonio Forastiero and Vincenzo Forastiero. And I figured, okay, those must be the people who I got the Zamp- who that friend bought that Zamponia from. And sure enough, as I did my research steadily over the years until this point, and I should also digress that all these pages were in Italian, but Google is your friend. I had Google translate all the pages into English. Forastiero is actually well known as the real Stradivarius of Zamponia makers. So if you don't know what a Stradivarius is, so the historic Stradivarius violin that was built by Antonio Stradivari, um, they're considered one of the best violins in the music industry, probably because of how old they are and you know how resonant they are. Well, it's the exact same thing in the Zamponia world where the Forastiero brothers are considered the Stradivarius of Zamponia makers. But, unfortunately, they're not, they're, at least Vincenzo is deceased, sadly deceased. But Antonio, I believe Antonio Forestiero is still alive. Now, I, I eventually, I became friends with that 
guy who bought the Zamponia, and I asked him, okay, you're an, you're an American. How did you learn Italian to communicate with the brothers? Because I've only heard the two brothers speaking Italian. He said, well, apparently Vincenzo could speak English. I'm like, ooh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that doesn't speak Italian. But then again, I did learn a little bit of Italian on my own because, again, how much I love those opera singers, especially Cecilia Bartoli. And Cecilia Bartoli is basically the forestiero of opera singers, in my opinion. Like, the best of the best, like, the most famous. Who is to say that... I may not have her name right, but who's to say that Domro is really good? I do not like Domro because her vibrato is literally a wobble vibrato. Which a lot, a lot of opera singers have wobble vibratos. And they don't even realize it. Um, but again, I'd rather save that for another time. So, I learned that the Forestiero brothers are basically the Stradivarius of the Zamponia makers. In Italian, the word maker for an instrument maker is costruttore or costruttore which means you know instrument man manufacturer but then I learned that um, I may not have his name right but Quirino Valtano uh, Quirino Valtano he's basically the direct descendant of the Forestiero brothers because he learned to make some ponies from the Forestiero brothers. And which explains why and and when I heard the Forestiero instruments, since I was told that those are the best instruments, um this kind of made me go on a tangent to find like who makes in these mo in this modern world, who makes Zamponias that sound just as good as all those Zamponias that were played on that La Zampogna Lucana C D. And apparently they're not all made by Forestiero. I mean, they may appear to be, but they're not all made by Forestiero. The thing they have in common is called the Lucana style of construction. So there are two or three main types of construction for the Zamponia. Um, obviously, apart from the single reed and double reed variety, there's the Lucana style with a big bassoon bell at the end of one of the, one of the pipes. And then there's the type from Central Italy, which doesn't really have too many. It has a bunch of different names. Mulisana, Abruzzo, Abetsanese. But I think describing one instrument with billions of names doesn't make any sense. Anyway, so who makes the best Lucanas and Ponyas out there nowadays? And so that's where I found out about Curino Valtano. Again, I may not have the name right, but... Corino Valdano. And um, I just had to get in touch with Corino Valdano and telling him that, you know, I'm an American who loves his Zampogna, but who doesn't speak any Italian at all. And turns out, Corino Valdano speaks fluent English. Yeah! He's a maker who trained directly with the Forestiero brothers who speaks fluent English. Awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome! But... The consequence is, I may be in touch with Quino Valdano. I have not, I'm not, I have not started working yet because I'm a fifth-year senior in college, so I have not saved up money yet to get my first Zampogna, which is kind of sad because who knows how long Quirino is going to be around? I mean, even though he was born in 1964, who knows how long Quirino is going to be around? Um, but I'm sure it won't even take that long. I mean, ten, maybe five years at most. <laughs> I mean, because most Zamponias individually cost maybe a thousand dollars or so, similar to most sets of bagpipes. Um, and, um, so that's basically how I fell in love with the Zamponia and why I did. Um, in a later date, I'm going to explain the different parts of the Zamponia, preferably, preferably when I have my first instrument, because it will be hard to explain if I don't have it. Um, but I will leave you with this. Like I said, 
I don't know too much Italian. The only real Italian I know of is a couple names of my favorite pieces, operatic pieces, particularly O Mio Babino Caro, as well as the ex exonyms, basically the English versions of Piper's names. So, for example, I'm going to give you some colons here. So, Antonio would be like Tony or Anthony. Vincenzo would be Vincent or Vince. Obviously, the names Cecilia and Maria are basically the same in Italian, but pronounced a little bit differently. Cecilia is Cecilia, and Maria is obviously Maria. I have a cousin named Maria, so that's why I mentioned that. Um, and of course, um, Quirino, it's hard to determine, but I believe Quirino might be Quinn. Um... If you think about the relationship that Quirino have it has with Quinn, name-wise, like the differences, the similarities, and stuff like that, um, and obviously there are quite a few other Zamponia players out there. Um, a lot of them on the La, La Zamponia Lucana CD, and in the description, I'm going to In the, de in the description, I'm going to um, direct you to links of those Zamponia pages that I found out about, particularly the f the one who b bought the instrument from Forastiero. Again, Forastiero is basically the Stradivarius or Cecilia Bartoli of Zamponia makers. And they learned from a guy named Carmine Trimarco. And Carmine Trimarco... Um, I think he would, okay, I'm not sure if he would be more of the Stradivarius, because he was the best maker in the early 20th century, late 18th century. And the linkage goes that Carmine Trimarco was born in 1864, died, I believe, 1960. And again, with all these Italian pages, I had these translated by Google, so... You know, it's like reading about an instrument that other people wouldn't even have a clue. Which means, you know, I know quite a bit more about Zamponias than English speakers do. Most English speakers do here. Not all, but most English speakers do. So I do feel pretty lucky about that. Anyway, so Antonio Forastiero was born in 1929, and his brother Vincenzo was born in 1919. So Vincenzo would be 100 years old this year. Um... In turn, they apprenticed their Zamponia making from Curi the, the, the Carmine Trimarco, who was born in 1864. believe he died in 1960. There's no real traceable date, which is kind of sad because there are very few traceable dates for a lot of Zamponia makers and players. And then, obviously, Quirino, he basically trained solely with the Forestiero brothers, and he was born in 1964. And then he's got a, a young hotshot, Vincenzo Sanzo, who was born in 1994, two years, young, two years older than I am. And he was actually kind of like Laura Breton of Romania, was an amazing opera singer at age 13. Vincenzo Sanzo was an amazing pianist at age 10 who played all these complicated Chopin pieces. I will tell you this, by the way, I don't play... I'm not, you know, I do play piano, but I'm not really one to play the complicated pieces. You know, I can still play some Bach inventions and some Beethoven sonatas and stuff like that. Because I learned to play the piano from the Suzuki method. Um, and I still remember my book four, Suzuki book four pieces, book three, book five pieces, even though I last played them in like eighth grade or something. <laughs> that's what, you know, that's what you get being a piper. You got a really good memory. So... Um, I guess at a later date, I'm going to talk more about the, you know, how much I know about the Zamponia. This was just to introduce people to, to the fact, like, why does he talk about Zamponias all the time? Well, this is why I love Zamponias. You know, they have two chanters, sometimes even three. And I like that idea of having two chanters rather than just one. Um, for example, the single reed chanter, uh, single reed Zamponias have... Now, we're just going to put that in perspective of every type of Zamponia. So they have a soprano chanter and an alto chanter. So that's the thing that sets a single reed Zamponia apart from a double reed Zamponia. 
double reed symphonias have a soprano chanter and a bass chanter in octaves. Whereas the single reeds, the chant, the soprano chanter and alto chanter are in fourths. And the most common is the double reed variety. So that is pretty much sums it up why I love the Zamponia and how I got to love it. Um, I, um, it was all because of my love for bagpipes. Um, I started loving the bagpipes at age eight in 2004, but this was the Scottish Highland bagpipe. And I didn't start like Velcroing onto the Zamponia until 2010, which is actually not too recent. Um, but ever since then, I've been really hooked on the Zamponia. And keep in mind, I don't speak much Italian. <laughs> I mean, sure, I do know O mio babino caro and Cecilia Bartoli and soprano and alto and tenore and basso and um, coloratura and names of really good sopranos. Um, in fact, I taught myself to say at least one sentence that I could potentially say to an Italian bagpipe maker. And I think I'm going to leave you with that. Adoro la zampogna, quindi vorrei comprare una zampogna. And that means, I love the zampogna, so I want to buy one. Again, that's the only Italian sentence that I know. Like, I do know quite a few of the words. You know, costruttore is, you know, instrument maker. Or bordone is drone. Or, um... Otre is the bag for zampognas. Anche is the reed. Um, Bucchino is the blowpipe. Um, and again, I've been taught all this just by looking at Google Translator. And again, there are quite a few people who don't speak English, quite a few zampogna players who don't speak English, so I communicate with them using Google Translator. In fact, I'm trying to make it my goal to create a Facebook group of Zamponia players who exclusively know how to speak English. Because, again, four or five people in this country play the Zamponia. That is way too small of a number. So I really want to make the Zamponias really popular, but it's going to be hard to do that if a lot of the pipers around here don't know Italian. So I feel like it would be best to create a Zamponia, a group of... A group on Facebook of some Ponya players who speak English. Doesn't matter where they're from, as long as they speak English. And I don't know if Corino Valdano is on Facebook, but I do know that he speaks fluent English. So I will, I will, I will finally leave you with this. Anybody interested to purchase a Zamponia, I'm going to put Corino's email is in the description. So in the description of this video, there are going to be links to where you can download La Zamponia Lucana. But again, keep in mind it's totally unremastered. It needs a lot of a lot of work to make it sound better. Because basically, if you recorded somebody singing with your phone and didn't enhance the quality whatsoever and just like randomly put that on the CD, that's basically how it was on this one. <laughs> and then also in the description, I'm going to put the link of where that guy bought the Zamponia. As well as the individual Zamponias from the Bagpipes Around the World CD and a link to where you can buy that CD. So, I guess I'll leave that. Um, again, at a later date, I'm going to talk about the parts of the Zamponia, how much I know about the Zamponia compared to a lot of other people. And I'll go into something that nobody I know of has ever known yet about the Zamponia. And I'll give you a clue. And this is only, that's the only hint. The first girl to ever play that instrument. Not an opera singer. But she's the first, this is about the, this secret thing is about, the th thing I'm saving is about the first girl who learned to play the Zamponia. And that was all the way back in 2012. I won't tell you her name yet. Don't worry, it is not Cecilia Bartoli. I wish it was, I wish it was, but it's not. So anyway, 
I know I've rambled, rambled off for a long, long, long while. I guess... I guess I'm out of here. All right. Ciao.